Well, thank you, Katrin. And now we'll come much closer to home, and uh, I guess we'll start with the usual update on the the two Mars rovers that are still uh, operating on the, the Martian surface. So first of all, Opportunity just celebrated its 4,000th day on Mars this last weekend. Um, a Sol is a, a solar day, the Martian day is about 37 minutes longer than on Earth, so we just call it a Sol instead of a day, and uh, it's quite a record. So uh, just an overview of, of where they've been and where they are. Uh, this is about 40, uh, a little over 40 kilometers to get to this point, which they're calling Marathon Valley. And uh, that, of course, is, is called Marathon Valley because they just passed uh, the marathon distance of, uh, of uh, you know, driving on Mars. So uh, this is just a little closer view of exactly where they are. They've actually surpassed this a little bit. So this was uh, last month that they, uh, they actually reached, uh, reached the 42.195 kilometer uh, marathon distance. And uh, this is a view from uh, uh, early last month looking into this marathon valley. And inside here is the, the inside of Endeavour Crater, um, the, that 20 kilometer diameter crater that they're parked along the edge of. And so just yesterday, uh, in the most recent download of images, this is what they were up to. Um, what's interesting in this area is from orbit uh, with uh, spectral data, there's good evidence for outcrops of clay minerals. And clays are uh, minerals that have been um, in contact with liquid water at some point in their past. And so they're, they're trying to measure those and that's what this outcrop they think is. And so they've got the, uh, the robotic arm extended yesterday and, uh, and trying to determine the, uh, the composition of those rocks. And so just uh, a quick recap for opportunity. Again, 4,004 days as of today. It's driven uh, a little bit longer than the marathon distance now, 42.24 kilometers. And it's returned just uh, a bit over 200,000 images. Um, I think for those of you that are regulars, um, you know that opportunity had some problems over Oh, the previous eight months or so, um, where the flash memory on board seemed to be corrupted, uh, just like bad spots on the disk drive on your computer. And uh, so periodically, um, periodically being multiple times a day, it would try to execute commands. Um, the commands would be corrupted. Some zeros had been flipped to ones and vice versa. And uh, the computer, the onboard computer would reboot itself. And in the course of uh, doing that, they'd essentially lose memory of what they were doing and, uh, and lose that day's science. And so um, in, uh, in early March, they reformatted the flash memory. Uh, it's very similar to if you've ever done this on your computer, it, uh, it sort of keeps track of where all the bad spots are and avoids using them. And so they, they sort of mask that part of the memory off and then reload the software. And they thought that was going to take care of it. Um, however, they've had several, it's called soft reboots, where it, uh, it isn't quite as serious as what it was running into before. It just uh, sort of triggers the computer to shut down and start up again, but they don't actually lose any data in the process of doing that. But it's, uh, it's still very worrisome that uh, they don't, they've, they've concluded that they don't really understand what the, uh, the problem is. It's got to be something a little more serious than, uh, than just uh, some damaged bytes in the, uh, in the computer, or damaged bits, so in the memory rather. And so they're keeping an eye on that. But so far, uh, since they did the reformatting, I think they've had two or three of these uh, soft reboot. So at least it's two or three over the course of a month and a half or two months as opposed to 
multiple times a day. So uh, it's in better shape than it was, but uh, it is a, uh, uh, a 11 and a half year old rover at this point. It was designed for 90 days, so uh, it's uh, perhaps not surprising that it's getting uh, older and crankier. So let's move to the other side of the planet and, uh, and look at the Curiosity rover. Um, it's rapidly approaching its 1,000th Sol on Mars. It landed in, uh, in August of 2012 and uh, it has only driven about 10 kilometers so far. So it's, it's moving much uh, less uh, vigorously than what uh, Opportunity has. But of course, it's only been there for about a fifth of the amount of time as well. And just to remind you where it landed, this is Gale Crater. It's about a 160 kilometer diameter crater. Um, there's this large mound of sedimentary rock in the middle that's actually about five kilometers from bottom to top. Um, and so the intention was to land within driving distance of, of Mount Sharp and then drive up into the foothills of the mountain. And uh, once they landed, there's Mount Sharp off in the distance. So they, uh, they landed right where they wanted to. And this is a, a closer up view of where they intend to wind their way up uh, through these, these layered rocks. And uh, the intent of this mission is to come up with the history of the uh, environment in this area um, when the rocks were formed. So the, the older rocks would be on the bottom. It should get younger as you, uh, as you climb the side of the mountain. And uh, they think that this was laid down in the presence of liquid water, that perhaps this was a, a crater lake um, and it essentially formed this large island in the middle and then the, the water went away. So they're hoping to uh, come up with a history of, of how that all happened. Um, and just uh, as an example here, there's the, the landing site. This is one of the um, conceptual paths that they, uh, they wanted to follow. And this is the, the real path. So Mount Sharp is down here. This is where they landed. And over the course of the last two and a half years, they've uh, made it into this vicinity. And this is where they're turning now to, uh, to actually start uh, entering the foothills, if you will, of, of Mount Sharp. Um, this is, uh, was released just a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is from Orbit. It's from the Mars Global, I'm sorry, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbit or the high rise camera. And so this is the area that uh, Curiosity has been driving. And we'll zoom in. There's the rover right there. And you can see the, uh, the shadow that it casts. And so what they're in the process of doing is, is sort of driving through this, uh, this area right now. And uh, a couple of uh, just sort of interesting things from the last month or so. Um, they came across an area with these bright uh, uh, sort of veins of material. And uh, when they look at that up close, a lot of this actually appears to be uh, um, raised compared to the background rocks. And typically what that means is the, the raised stuff is, is more durable than the stuff that's been eroded away, which uh, is, is how you form structures like that. And so this is about uh, 30 centimeters, say um, a foot or so. And so this is a fairly substantial uh, outcrop of this stuff compared to what they've seen in the past. This is a microscope view. Um, and the interesting thing is there's actually multiple types of material here. So the, the, uh, the tannish or lighter stuff um, in their measurements, it's called cristobalite or cristobal. And uh, that's a, a, a silica mineral. Um, it's, uh, it's very high um, silica content. And on the earth, it's the type of stuff that you lay down rocks, say like a mudstone, you make cracks in it, 
and then groundwater percolates up through those cracks. It's got dissolved silica in it and, uh, and that precipitates out and, and fills in the cracks. But there's obviously other stuff that's uh, sort of embedded here. This isn't uh, just pure, um, pure silica material. And there's at least three different uh, types of material here. The tan stuff, this grayish stuff, and then this sort of brownish stuff. And uh, so they're still uh, trying to figure out the relationship of all of those minerals. But it all comes back to water flowing through these cracks. Um, again, if, uh, if you're a regular, you know that they've been keeping close track on the, the state of the wheels on Curiosity. Um, so this, the reason this is so screwy looking is this is on the end of the robot arm. It's the microscope camera that they can actually focus uh, from very close up all the way out to infinity. And so they can bring this under the, the bottom of the rover. So this is the bottom deck of the rover and uh, just look at things that it uh, would be impossible to see with the other cameras. And you notice these uh, sort of tears in the wheels. And here's a better view <coughs> looking down from the, uh, the mast cam. And you see uh, lots of tears, but they've been keeping track of this for the last year or so now. And uh, it hasn't gotten a whole lot worse. Um, they've been taking great pains to uh, where they have a choice to not drive over sharp rocks. Um, just like, uh, you know, if you're out four-wheeling, it's probably not a good idea to go over sharp, pointy rocks if you don't have to. And uh, that seems to be uh, slowing down the degradation of the, of the wheels. Um, one other thing that they uh, did just... Uh, early last month is looked at this device on the front of the, uh, the uh, rover. It's actually vertical, so the top of the rover is up toward the top of the dome here. These are magnets of varying strengths, and so by uh, being vertical, this actually pulls magnetic particles out of the airborne dust. And so it's not dust just settling on it, it's, uh, it's dust in the atmosphere that gets uh, attracted by the magnets. And, uh, and the people that are actually doing this experiment, you can see that some of the areas are much more uh, densely covered than, than others. And so they can use that as a means of analyzing how much uh, magnetic material is in the dust and, uh, and even coming up with some ideas for what it might be. Okay, so the, the remaining pictures here are just sort of a travel log of some just really pretty uh, vistas over the last uh, month and a half or so. So uh, this is the, some of these foreground outcrops that they've been uh, trying to avoid, actually. This is not an area that you'd want to be driving on, but off in the background, these are the layered areas of, of Mount Sharp that they're um, ultimately trying to get to. <clears throat> and I think this is the last one. This was taken about a week ago, and uh, it's just sort of nice to see that, yes, the wind is still doing its thing on Mars and uh, drifting fine material um, covering or uncovering these outcrops. Okay, so uh, recapping uh, Curiosity's mission, it's day 970. They've driven just a little bit over 10 kilometers and uh, already returned about 235,000 images. Um, one of the reasons that Curiosity is returning so much more imaging data is it's, uh, it's got 16 different cameras on board. So uh, whenever they exercise all of those, they get a lot of data back. Uh, Spirit and Opportunity, on a typical day, they might return several dozen up to maybe a hundred or so. I think a typical day on Curiosity is uh, multiple hundreds, I think. Uh, 
I, I just went back uh, the previous 20 days from today, and I, I think the maximum I saw in a single day was about 700 images came in. So uh, a lot of data coming back.